Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value, hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the KLH Model 5. Is it as good as everybody says it is? I don't know. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee. Well, let's talk about the KLH Model 5. Today's sponsor is Audiophile Flashlights. They help you see in the dark. The KLH Model 5. They've been reviewed, covered by just about everybody. Except for me, but we got them now. So we're going to talk about them now. They are a three-way sealed enclosure. They call it base reflex. I call it sealed because there's no holes in it. Comes with a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Just kidding. The KLH Model 5 come in at $1,250 per one. So for a pair, it's $24.99, hundy. Comes with the stands, though, and they come very, very well boxed up. If you ever saw my unboxing of these things, you'd see why. It's very difficult. It was challenging to unbox these because they were packaged so well. So take solace in the fact that KLH Model 5s are packaged very well. This is a three-way design, which includes a one-inch aluminum dome tweeter, a four-inch cone mid-range driver, a 10-inch cone AWUFA, reported frequency response of 42 hertz up to 20,000 hertz, recommended amplifier power up to 200 watts. In the specs, it says 20 to 200. And that's very refreshing. Usually companies say, oh, this thing needs 150 watts. Not KLH, 20. 20 is good for them. Reported sensitivity of 90.5 dB. Now, that's in room. Anechoic, I think it's around 87 dB. Has a nominal impedance of six ohms. However, it does dip down to 3.7 ohms. So, you need to make sure that your amplifier can handle a dip of 3.7 ohms. This one's black. It, it comes in other colors too. Um, it does come with a very woo, nice heather gray grill. This is not a regular run of the mill speaker. Somebody took some care in the design of this speaker. Does it translate into sound? We're gonna find out. On the back, there is one set of binding posts, but there's something special on the back. There's a tweeter modification thing, attenuator. There are three positions, low, medium, Hi. So, pretty big. These are kind of a throwback, kind of a vintage vibe. This is the type of speaker that I would have had in my room, except they would have been way worse than this, because they would have been cheap, because that's all I could afford when I was in junior high and high school. But they've got that kind of Sherwin Vega style look. You know, if you lived in the 80s and early 90s. So I had these paired up to three different things. One, the Pioneer VLX VX305. It's an AVR receiver. Had them running in pure direct mode. Wasn't a great pairing. Also, I had them hooked up to my vintage Mac stuff. A C15 preamp and a 7270 power amp, which is a monster. I had the Denifreps Ares 2 feeding that. Also had them hooked up to the Buchard i150 with the Denifreps Ares 2 feeding that as well. It's a $2,500 pair of speakers, so I figured I'd throw some money at it from an electronic standpoint. And turns out that that paid off. One thing I'll say about these speakers is they are very transparent and it really takes on the characteristics of the electronics. So I had it hooked up to three different things and it almost sounded like three different speakers, depending upon the amp that I had it hooked up to. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. <laughs> No surprise here, soundstage and imaging was very good. Chocolate chip trip was seamless. The size and scale of these Model 5s, well, it's about as big as they look, right? There's something about this style of speaker, the vintage style with the larger front baffle that can do some really special things when it comes to soundstage and imaging and really make the performance seem different than other speakers, even tower speakers. These, the Wharfdale Linton, they do things with soundstage and imaging that I don't normally hear with other speakers. And that's just a, a refinement of the size. So it ceases being just kind of lateral and forward and aft soundstage. And it just becomes more realistic, like a in-the-room experience when it comes to music. 
So Chocolate Chip Trip was seamless, very wide. More Human Than Human by Rob Zombie was almost tangible with the way it went. Da, 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 da. But also placed, placed some of the, I call them orbs, orbs of energy. Placed some of the orbs of energy in front of other orbs of energy. So there was forward to aft imaging with Rob Zombie. Which, incidentally, he's playing this weekend, Saturday, with Power Man 5000 and Mudvayne. Mudvayne got back together. Thinking about going. Beats to the Rhyme by Run DMC. At the 1 minute and 20 second mark, there's a you know, the, the record scratching thing. And then something came forward. I think there's a little cover of James Brown in there. Anyway, it came forward. Like a 3D movie. So whatever they're doing, they're doing a great job. Now to be fair, I hear some of the same things coming from the Wharfdale and Linton. But as a whole, soundstage and imaging, especially forward to aft and height wise is pretty spectacular with the KLH Model 5s. Let's talk about bass. With the sealed enclosure, I didn't quite know what to expect because I've never really heard a sealed speaker that I've been like, oh my goodness, I love this bass. However, with a larger woofer, paper cone, I was pleasantly surprised. So there's a good combination between heft, punch, and extension here. And normally people always say, well, if it's a sealed enclosure, it's going to have really good extension. Maybe there's good extension, but I can't hear really any thickness or weight to the bass, even though it really rolls off very well. However, this is a little bit different. This sounded to me to be similar to a ported speaker. Tone and texture, Miles Davis, so what, was the bass was airy. I know it's kind of counterintuitive, but there is air, there is space, there is width in bass, so there's bass clarity. So from 30 seconds to about 35 seconds, really probably 40 seconds, there's a, a bass solo. And it was very subtle, very nuanced, very detailed. These handled it very well. And there, it, it did go very deep. So there was, there was a good heft and depth in roll off all at the same time. So I was very impressed. Intergalactic with the Mac stuff was almost too much. The boot card was kind of Goldilocks, just right. The Pioneer was a little bit too thin. And this isn't an amp comparison, but this speaker is probably the most transparent speaker I've ever heard when it comes to electronics. So I can't sit here and say this speaker has X when it comes to its bass performance, because it really was different depending upon the amp. With all that said, extension and presence was way better than I thought it was gonna be considering it has a sealed enclosure. Run's house, whose house? Run's house by Run DMC. 21 second mark goes doo doo. I heard it. Now, granted, it still needed a subwoofer to really get kind of the most out of that song, but I still heard it. So, bass is really, really good. Very surprised. Let's talk about mid range. God's Gonna Cut You Down by Johnny Cash. A little step back. And that really was on all amplifiers. So, Johnny can be very forward when he's singing that song. His voice was still full. Because sometimes when he stepped back, it's he just kind of seems distant. But there was still fullness, almost a warmth to his voice. But there's still a bunch of detail in here. And this is where the speaker kind of gets special. Because it's kind of simultaneously warm and exciting on top at the same time. Which I don't think I've experienced that before. Hello by Adele was flawless. Her voice, airy, you could hear the vibrato, you could hear the delicacy in her voice. It was really outstanding. However, some amps did things a little bit differently. The Mac stuff was really almost U-shaped, so really boosted on the bottom, really sparkly on top. The Bucard, a little bit, a little bit warmer compared. I'll put it to you this way. I had to use the treble mod in the lowest position on the Mac stuff and in the medium position on the boot guard. So it does depend on the amp. And maybe that's why they put it on there. Shoot to Thrill was uh, gravelly yet full, wonderful electric guitars, all the Metallica stuff I listened to. Oh, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh, we'll get to that next. Very weighty yet very detailed. Electric guitars, very addicting here. So this is very much a rock and roll speaker. Let's talk about treble. For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica. The bells at the beginning of the song, I'm talking the first 10 seconds, were so good, 
so realistic that I listened to that part a dozen times. I pulled my son in to sit down and listen to that part. There is something about that song that the amount, it felt like there was a bell in front of my face. It was really spectacular. Conversely, the cymbal hits on that song, as well as Higher Love by Steve Winwood, another really good audio file song, I like it. You should too. Yacht Rock was in that playlist, Yacht Rock. Anyway, a little bit spicy on the Mac stuff. On the boot card stuff, less spicy. Trying to, I'm trying to really push this point home that this speaker does take on different characteristics of the amplification. Overall though, I think the treble can lean a bit hot at times depending upon the track and especially depending upon the amp. I couldn't quite get the treble exactly how I wanted it on the Mac stuff. On the boo card, I could get it right where I wanted it to. So bear in mind, this can come in a little bit hot on top. Tone of it is still very good. The decay is still very good. Sometimes though, it seemed a little bit, a little bit, mm, a little bit intense. Mainly percussion, cymbals. I don't know what frequency that is, but whatever that frequency is, coming in a little hot. What are my final thoughts? Ooh, final thoughts. Remember that part? Where Han Solo comes back, grabs the Millennium Falcon from Rey and Finn, and they start talking about the Force. And he's gonna, and he's, and Han Solo goes, "It's, it's true, all of it." It's kind of what this speaker's like. My patrons have told me that this speaker has been very well reviewed, and I've probably watched one or two of them. I don't remember though. I don't remember what was specifically said, but I think this speaker has been very positively reviewed. And I would agree that it is. Really fantastic. There's a combination of extreme transparency to the electronics, huge sound stage, very clear, accurate bass tones, very clear, accurate mid range, and clear and accurate treble sometimes can be a bit spicy. The speaker gave me a presentation that I have not heard through anything else. It was the bells on For Whom the Bell Tolls which just shocked me. It was so good and so different from what I've heard before that it kind of, have you ever had a dessert at a really good restaurant and you just kind of go, mm, and just kind of have to sit down and not think about anything else for a second and just take in the wonderment? That's what it was like with the bells and for whom the bell tolls. Dumb by Nirvana off the MTV Unplugged record. Giant space, very realistic again. I don't quite know what this speaker is doing, but it is putting it's putting a performance in my living room. Oh, I forgot to tell you how far, I had these right up against the wall. I mean, probably 10 inches from the wall. Because it's a sealed enclosure, you can get them very close to a wall. And frankly, that's where I thought they sounded the best, was right up against a wall. I did pull them out a little bit, it just there wasn't that magic. I thought they performed at their best Darn near shoved right against the wall. I think with the right amplifier, this speaker is going to be hard to find fault with, except for the price. The problem is I haven't heard a speaker that's half the price that does 80% of what this speaker does. Usually I can say, well, okay, this speaker is fantastic, but if you can't afford it, here's something that may be a good alternative. I don't have one for this speaker because I haven't heard another speaker quite like the KLH Model 5s. I wish I did. If I did, I would tell you, but I don't, so I won't. System synergy? Almost not really an issue here because it's such a chameleon, it kind of gives you whatever the source material is. Now you could say, well, an amplifier is not supposed to do anything except for amplify the signal. It should be very clean. In theory, yes, that's the case. In practice, that's never been the case for me. There are amplifiers that sound dramatically different in my experience. So hopefully you love the sound of your amplifier because this is gonna be kind of a microscope or a very clean window into the sound of your amplifier. So I really don't have any negative things to say. Sometimes, depending upon the amp, it could be a little bit hot on top. Other than that, pretty much think it's flawless, except for the price. The problem is there's nothing at half the price that do what these do. These have gone up in price, but if you have the budget for these, I would give them strong consideration because I think they will surprise you I know they surprised me. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for my Patreon. We have Patreon only Zooms. You can also use the links in the description. Those are affiliate links. I've had a lot of questions about comparing this to the Linton 
I may do that. If you want to check out the review of my Linton, I'll put it right here or here. I never know what side. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe pull out the credit card, max it out, and binge listen through the KLH Model 5s and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.